my dear friends, uh, one of the most important elements of um, tactics in chess is uh, the pin. Now, um, it is quite unusual for uh, somebody to try to describe the uh, workings of a pin, uh, the usage of pin, how to use the pin to win the game or how to fight against the pin. Uh, but in fact, I think it is actually uh, very important uh, as um, some research uh, which I did recently. I went through a lot of games uh, played at different levels, especially at a club level, and um, turned out that uh, many games, in fact most of the games, are decided uh, by pins since pins contribute to mating attacks, to loss of material, and so on. And uh, since uh, this is uh, very rarely done, mostly people concentrate um, on openings, um, I suggest we take a closer look at some tactical elements uh, in, um, uh, in detail, and I suggest we start with uh, the pin, and uh, I suggest we start with uh, the very basics, so that um, we uh, will not be uh, missing any material, and our examples will get uh, more and more complicated as we proceed. But now, okay, uh, the very uh, basic uh, usage of PIN, uh, so that uh, also those of you who um, are maybe a bit less experienced than the others uh, will um, understand what I mean, is um, uh, the following. Uh, black has uh, the king on A8, uh, pawns uh, b7 um, a6 and uh, um, it looks like uh, black has his uh, pawns protected the king uh, is uh, covered by um, the pawns but in fact the protection of the pawn on a6 uh, is an illusion the pawn on uh, b7 cannot move uh, since uh, by moving uh, it will uh, make uh, the king uh, open uh, open to a check. Thus, uh, white can and should, in this position, capture the pawn on a6. And um, since black cannot possibly take, uh, white will mate uh, on the next move with um, king b8, queen b7. So, uh, returning to the starting position, we see uh, the um, elementary, uh, the most basic uh, principle uh, of the pin. The pin actually means that the piece cannot move. And in this case, the pawn on b7 being uh, immobile, so to speak, that is not capable of moving, um, also does not give um, any protection to the pawn on a6. And thus, white can uh, take the pawn uh, like any other unprotected pawn. Um, this uh, is one of the most basic things about the pin, and in this particular case you see that uh, the usage of pin in the attack can uh, bring uh, about uh, the desired result, that is uh, mating uh, of the black king. Uh, those of you who uh, find all this uh, way too simple, please uh, be patient, bear with me, and uh, examples, they will get uh, more tricky and they will get more difficult. Now we proceed, uh, we proceed with the basics. Now, a um, second uh, basic uh, example uh, of how to use uh, the pin to win material. Now, in this particular position, you see that uh, the black bishop is uh, pinned uh, along the diagonal. However, in this particular case, the black bishop can move. It can go to, to c3, to d2, to e1. It is only that the black bishop cannot leave uh, the diagonal since uh, it covers uh, the path to the black king. This uh, uh, having been mentioned, uh, we see that the pawn on a3, in fact, lacks protection since uh, the black bishop will not be able to go to a3. And thus, uh, the solution, white can take queen takes a3. As in our previous example, it is the pawn which looked protected, but in fact was not protected. And the most amazing thing about um, 
the usage of pain and about this optical illusion of a pawn being protected uh, is in fact that even stronger players, even very strong players, every now and again fall victim to this illusion that they think something is in fact protected because as in this case there is a pawn on a3 and the bishop on uh, b4 and uh, it is in fact easy to miss especially in calculations um, this detail that in fact in this particular case the bishop which looked uh, quite strong uh, turned out to be pinned and um, in fact did not protect uh, the pawn and here in this uh, particular position the black king has to go and after queen a8 white uh, wins uh, the queen and we see the second uh, basic usage of a pin white uh, wins the material decisively and also we continue to understand that the pawn which looked protected was in fact not protected and also the practical difficulties connected uh, to the recognition of the fact that in fact sometimes in calculations we go um, by visual patterns and uh, sometimes things that look protected um, might in fact not be and as we will also later see uh, pieces which look pinned might in fact uh, be uh, very mobile after all so this was our uh, second um, basic example now let's um, proceed uh, let's proceed a bit further this is our um, third uh, basic um, example um, a slightly more complicated one uh, than previously we see that uh, white is um, pawn up and um, as uh, the majority on the queen side which clearly has to bring him uh, the victory if he uh, is to win the game at all that is white will have to exchange pieces and um, this exchange should bring him the favorable option of advancing the b-pawn all the way to the queen now let's try to do this in a straightforward manner white takes bishop takes f6 rook takes f6 rook takes king takes now the time has come we run with the pawn the black king has to come to the rescue we run black approaches and now by now we already feel that something has gone wrong since after b6 ab if we go ab king c6 black has in fact uh, caught the pawn and if we go a6 king c7 black is already in time and you might ask what does it actually have to do with the pin and uh, where is white's win now we return to the starting position and uh, uh, now we also understand the importance of recognizing the pin in the position where the pin doesn't seem to be there so if we look at this position closely we'll see that white has the bishop on the same diagonal as uh, the black king and um, whilst uh, also the black bishop is on the same diagonal this doesn't have the desired effect but in fact if any other piece would have been there uh, then this piece would have been clearly pinned and that's the solution we can take with the rook and after black takes with the rook there is a perfect pin the rook cannot move and also the king cannot abandon the rook since uh, king uh, needs to protect it so now we actually get to win a decisive tempo uh, due to this pin we go b4 now black king has to approach as in the other lines and now since the black rook is actually threatening to move now we can take this king takes f6 and b5 and we see that we have uh, the same plan but the black king is not able to come in due time and white is uh, queening so you see in this uh, particular case the usage of the pin enabled us to win time decisively in uh, the ending and in fact in the starting position the pin had not actually been there and we had to um, recognize the pattern and recognize the importance 
of uh, the pin. In this particular case, not to make, not to win material directly, but to win time. Since uh, the piece which is pinned cannot move and also requires, as in this case, some additional attention. So we proceed with, um, with some of our basic examples and uh, look at how um, we can unpin in case um, uh, the opponent is pinning us. There are many uh, unpinning uh, mechanisms um, and we will uh, take a look at um, quite a number of them in the process, uh, but um, at this moment let's uh, look at uh, the more um, simpler, simpler ways. Uh, in this particular case we see that um, the queen can also be a pinning piece and the queen is uh, pinning the black bishop which is also attacked. The rook is unprotected, that's why if the bishop were to leave the, uh, the file, then queen takes b5, wins the rook. In this particular uh, case, we also see the difference between uh, a piece covering uh, its king or some other piece. Theoretically, if the black king would have been on b5, then the bishop would never move, because uh, this would be illegal. In this case, uh, however, bishop moving loses the rook. So sometimes we also have to pay attention to the fact that a pinned piece might actually move. In this particular case, uh, black uh, saves himself uh, by a trick. He can remove uh, one of his pieces with check uh, and thus uh, enable uh, his pinned piece uh, to uh, regain certain freedom of action. Like in this particular case, black can go rook g5 check and now these are the rules of chess the white king has to move now the bishop uh, is no longer pinned and black can simply uh, capture on a5 and uh, solve the problem it's also uh, interesting to uh, uh, note that in this position black can also unpin himself by first moving his rook to a protectable square also with check, rook b2 check, king f3, and bishop d4. We see that first uh, the rook has been moved to the square where it can be protected, and then the pinned piece could move, since from d4 bishop is uh, protecting the rook. Now this is one of the uh, basic principles of um, unpinning that a piece uh, which is which is being covered in this case the rook on uh, b5 finds a tactical possibility to uh, leave it square and then the pinned piece becomes mobile as i said the examples will uh, become more complicated and we will proceed with uh, some uh, with some introduction into the usage of uh, the pin in the openings, the importance of it, and then later proceed with some other basic techniques uh, of how to pin, how to unpin, how to use the pin, and then lots of uh, examples from practical play will follow. Uh, so stay with me, we'll uh, continue in our next clip.